Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dragosh, and I am still here in the pandemic, but uh, good news, it's another episode of the Labrador Energy Podcast. And in this particular podcast, we're going to be talking with Rob Moriarty. Now, Rob, he's uh, relatively new to comedy. He's been doing comedy for about a year. Uh, he's uh, in his late 20s, and we're just talking about uh, the challenges of starting up comedy at a later time in your life. I personally also started around 26, 27. Uh, we talk a bit more about the process of discovering that this is the thing you have to commit to. How do you kind of come to the realization and how do you go about kind of committing to comedy going forward and uh, what do you do afterwards? Uh, it's a very interesting conversation. You know, Rob basically has moved over from Ireland to Berlin uh, for more stage time. And, you know, obviously the pandemic hit this now. So it's caught him in a bit of a pinch uh, in, in, a, in a hostel, a lot of Polish workers. But uh, we talk a bit more about his experiences here, uh, doing comedy, coming out as being gay as part of his comedy, even though he does not you know, look gay. Uh, so it's a very interesting podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a really, really rare look at the start uh, of someone's career in, in, in this comedy scene. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, please follow Rob, follow myself, subscribe, like, give a comment. And uh, yeah, onward with the podcast, the Labrador Energy Podcast, Rob Moriarty. Sweet. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, what's up? All right, perfect, man. Welcome, welcome, Rob Moriarty, to the Labrador Energy Show. That is a strong introduction. Uh, thanks, for having me, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for thanks for uh, doing the podcast, man. Are you still in Berlin at the moment, or? I'm still in Berlin. Yeah, I'm in my uh, in my hostel um, at the moment. I've had to find like a room I don't think I'm supposed to be in because the only place I think I can guarantee uh, silence. But, oh, that's um, fine. I mean, yeah. even if you kind of shave, even if it cuts off or anything, we can do it. Uh, we can do it some other time if uh, if it cuts off or. or I don't know. It's perfect. It's just like around like this time, maybe an hour or two. Like I'm in. I'm like the only Irish student here, and the rest is just like all Polish dudes, and they all. Oh work. really? Yeah, they all work in like construction somewhere around here, and then they all come in at like six, and they just fucking like balls in the China shop, like they're just blaring fucking. Eastern European. Do they start like uh, drinking in the drinking in the place, or? Yeah, yeah, just drinking, and then they just come into the kitchen, and they fucking yeah, just shouting at each other and everything. So uh, in in random Polish speak, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't have an indoor voice. <laughs> this is but, true. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have a. Uh, in fairness, my roommate is pretty. I'm lucky with my roommate. He's like fifty something, so he's really quiet. So we don't, um, he's, uh, he never really leaves the room. So how, unless, how, did uh, you, how did you end up in this predicament? You came from, let me give a bit of an introduction. So you're, you're originally Irish yeah. by, by design? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, you, when did you start? Did you start doing comedy? So for those of you that don't know, Rob is actually a comedian as well. Indeed. You started doing comedy um, in Dublin? Or? In Dublin, yeah, exactly. I think exactly a year ago. Um, okay. A year ago, yesterday, I think. It was around the start of November. Um, Congratulations, you've made it. Year. Oh, thank you. I do, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think I started, uh, yeah, a year ago yesterday, and I did, there was, it's like a similar place to Sunday Slips. It's like an open mic for everything, like poetry, fucking music or whatever. Like an open stage type of deal, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no microphone, you just go up, um, and I went up, and I thought I had, I brought my brother with me because he's an actor, so I thought he okay. could give me, like, some, uh, you know, advice or whatever, and I went, and I thought I had five minutes worth of uh, jokes, and I went up, and I had them all written on my hand, didn't look up in my hand, and then I... Mm -hmm said it and I, I, and I ran off and I thought I did like five minutes and then I said to my brother I was like how long was that and he was like oh you're up there for like about a minute and a half um, oh really uh, yeah yeah so it was the first time I did it and then that's so funny and then I just got the yeah yeah and like I didn't uh and it went okay to be honest it went it went okay a couple of jokes like I had a like I had like a black lives matter joke which is like Pretty fucking uh, <laughs> pretty brave for like the first time going up. It was and, like uh, back last year, but okay, it wasn't as hot at the time, I guess. In November, like, it wasn't like in the middle of uh, the George Floyd situation, but November. it was uh, it was still in the zeitgeist. But uh, yeah, so I had a couple of dodgy jokes, um, 
I, but I think people know it's your first time, so they give you a bit of a. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, is it just, uh, yeah. you know, you're just coming out as a racist now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, 100%. Yeah, that's what I am. Um, because you put up some jokes and I, uh, I, whatever I had people say that to me, you know, you joke about certain things and they're like, oh, you're not afraid, you know, people will think, you know, you're racist with certain jokes. And it's like, it's like, no, we're not really. Cause you know, and like you're, uh, you're, uh, you know, you know in your, yourself that you're not, you're just trying to get a fucking laugh. In your heart, you know, there is no, there is no in hate. In your heart of heart. Yeah. There's no hate. It's just trying to get a fucking laugh, you know? And, uh, yeah, yeah I had, um, I did that first set and then, uh, yeah, you know yourself, you just fucking just felt alive, you know, you feel alive. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think it was, that was just something I hadn't felt in fucking in a good long time. Um, and then I just, I just loved comedy. I just loved stand up and was obsessed with it. And then I think I was at a point in my life where I was like, fuck, I have to like, uh, so what age was I at the time? I was 25. So I was kind of like, uh, what age did you start at actually, were you? 20, 27, like 26, 27 as well, somewhere around the same age. Yeah. I mean, I'm slightly yeah, later sure. than you actually, because I'm, I'm, I'm 31 yeah. now. So basically I yeah. started in 2016-ish, 2015-ish, so something around 2016, yeah. 2017, somewhere around yeah. So you know yourself when you get into something at that age, it's like, uh, you know, I have to do this, I have to commit to this because there's no... It's not like you're a fucking nipper anymore. Not like you're like 18 or not. Yeah, you know what I mean? You're not a kid anymore. So you don't the clock is ticking. The clock around. is ticking, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though we're like still young, it's like, yeah. Like, you know, I was like, I have to commit to this. And yeah. I think I kind of knew that um, after the first few gigs, I, after the first few gigs, I thought I, I could do this if I really fucking, if I really worked hard. And it was actually really, I was doing it maybe two months. Um, and the people who run that open mic that uh people who run that open mic that i first did they did like a an award type ceremony thing at the end of the year um and where they hand out like just like these like little awards for like you know best uh, newcomer musician or best poet right. or best whatever um and then i was i don't even do it two months and then they gave me like a best newcomer comedian award or whatever and that really like fucking took me by surprise yeah yeah, yeah. and then the, the girl who runs it was like you know like she was just like um you know i've seen a lot of she's like i know you've not even doing it two months and stuff but she's like i've seen a lot of people come to here and um i she was just like hey, whatever you know you just, just promise me you'll keep at it and you know you, you think you've got something there so once i heard that then i was like fuck if i just do this and at that point i was so addicted to it i was doing it mm-hmm. like four or five times a week. Um, That's great that you can do it so many times in Ireland. Like yeah. I think for, uh, for me, the issue was like, uh, I didn't, didn't have enough space to do it uh, so many times because I was living in Singapore at the time and we only had like, well, like, I think two open mics a week. Yeah. Um, and then the same situation, like people kind of that are hanging around the space for a longer time, they're like, oh, you, they kind of they pick you out of the crowd. It's like you're, you're better, basically. Come do, you yeah, get the opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. to like, come do this mic, come do, you like uh, approval from the peers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like in Ireland, getting five a week is good. Sometimes it would only be three or four, but right. um, you get. Uh, but then you hear stories. You think you're doing loads, and then you hear stories mm-hmm. of like um, I don't know if you know, you know Mark Norman. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. hear him. You hear him talking about doing like four sets a night in New York mm. or five sets a night, and you're like, "Fuck, I'm doing." So how how far you, behind am I, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. And then, you know, these guys have been doing it since, you know, they were young as well, like younger than we had started. So mm. you do feel like you have a lot of catching up to do. So I just try and get up as like as often as possible. And I do the mics as well, where like there's so, the reason I could get like five mics a week in Ireland was because there's maybe two or three mics a week where uh, they're just apart from the one that I was where I started, there's like these mics where they're just they're mainly music mics in bars right. that like are kind of just people are just there to get pissed and no one wants to do no one wants to listen to comedy um and i i, I can't remember who it was but they just, yeah but they were i can't remember who it was but they were just saying that like any stage is a stage you know any yeah, anytime yeah. you can get up to it no matter how fucking 
miserable the crowd is or whatever, just get up and do it. So I'd go and do those mics and like no one in the room is fucking listening and no one cares. They're heckling you and they're mm-hmm. whatever. And then but and then you'd have other comedians saying, Oh, why would like, why do you do that mic? You learn nothing. And it's like, well, no, you do learn something, like you learn how to, you know, handle a fucking like a rough crowd and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's uh, I mean, especially you know, in Berlin, and, you don't get that with those kind of crowds here, right? You don't get people kind of hating on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you can then when you go and do you do one of those shows, and uh, then you go from doing one of those shows to like a show in a comedy club, and it's a fucking you know, it's a walk in the park because, um, exactly. and then you get better at you know handling hecklers. You know, you get quicker. Uh, um, the muscle, yeah, the muscle memory kind of comes Most, in, right? Yeah, because the thought of that, the thought of hecklers and stuff scared the shit out of me when I started. Like, I, right. I was like, fuck, I can't, like, I thought the first time I get heckled, I just, you know, break down on stage and never want to do it again. But the first time it happens and then, you know, you just fucking, um, like, have you, ever been to the, have you ever been to the Fringe? Uh, the Edinburgh Fringe? Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 I was going to go this year. I think, well, when it comes back up, I think that's uh, definitely good to check out. Because uh, for me, uh, for example, I, w- I wanted to go to the Fringe. I've heard a lot about the Fringe and I wanted to check it out. And I think yeah. uh, that's, when the, that's when it clicked for me, the doing it full-time thing. Uh, doing yeah. it like just dedicating to it. Because uh, I went to the Fringe and basically there's, it, you know, the, the, the process for getting into the Fringe is anybody can do a show. If you have yeah. money to kind of set up, uh, to cover your accommodation and if you find a venue, fucking anybody can do it, right? So I went to the yeah. fringe and I've been doing it for a couple of years at a time and uh, not that often. I was in Estonia. I was doing it like one, two mics uh, a month. Um, and yeah. I go to the fringe and I'm like, you know, with this amount of like uh, stage up, stage up that I have now, I was like, I'm like somewhere in the middle compared to what I see here, right? Because you see such a wide variety. Mm. So I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. If I'm in the middle now with like this little amount of effort that I'm putting in, how fast could I rise with the top of actual effort putting in, right? It's a similar situation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because at the fringe, you see so many people from like different levels of ex- like anybody can do a show, right? So people that are like you know, um, do, do, you know, you have these people that do comedy for like ten years, but yeah. they perform once or twice twice a year, and yeah, then they, yeah, they yeah, go yeah, to the yeah. fringe. like oh, I've been doing comedy for ten years, I'm pro. Yeah, yeah. The fuck, yeah. the fuck out of here. Yeah, and that yeah, kind yeah, of you're yeah. like, okay, if is. this is like if this is the standard, then I can climb up for this. I can be I can be part of the five percent to like the top ten percent easy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's um. Because like throughout the before lockdown and stuff, you talk you obviously talk to other comedians after shows and uh, yeah. you know uh, they're kind of asking you how long you've been doing it and say you've you've just smashed a show or whatever, um, and then you're like oh I've only been doing it like a few months and then they're kind of like surprised that you've been only doing it that short amount of time but yeah you seem so comfortable on stage and then you're like there's no magic to it it's just I've been doing way more gigs than everybody else and it's like. Yeah. Like, a, such a small percentage of it is, well, not a small percentage of it, but a certain percentage of it is just being funny and being able to write jokes, but a massive chunk of it is just doing, you know yourself, like, work, you yeah, fucking doing the leg work. more than anybody. Yeah, like, I you mean, gig more than anybody I know, and it's like, it's, yeah, that's all it is. It's like, 90% of it is like, fucking being on stage as much as you possibly can. Um, yeah, and I think this is like, I was talking to somebody about like, the, the crowd work stuff, and they were like, you know, you're so, you got so good at crowd work. I was like, bro, before before summer, I was I was shit at crowd work. I was barely doing any crowd work. Yeah. Right? But then once yeah. the shows came back and we had to do so many kind of open mics and you know the, the stage time doubled and I'm hosting all the time, I have yeah. no other option but to do constant crowd work all the time. So like somebody, I was just doing a podcast before this with uh, this guy called Mohammed, and he was like, you know, how are you, how are you thinking of these things so fast? It's because every day I do like an hour and a half of crowd work at these. You know, when yeah, you do spree yeah, at yeah. like seven p.m. and then you do spree at nine p.m. It's just crowd work, crowd work, crowd work. Uh, and then yeah. I only put 30 seconds of the of the well, one hour and a half of crowd work online. So you see the only yeah, 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 But then yeah. the idea is the more you do it, yeah. the faster and more content you can get out of that. Um, yeah. But that's why yeah. that's why I recommend like and I was telling Pascal as well. Like you know you have to kind of track your stage time and you have to kind of uh, you have to kind of um, you, you just because that's that's where you kind of really see like for me the the metrics that I have is, you know, it's always been the stage time and laughs per minute, right? Because those are the true things yeah, that yeah. kind of help you become a better comedian. So for me, when I was yeah. doing, uh, when I kind of sat down and did like a spreadsheet of uh, the amount of stage time that I had done before moving to Berlin, it was like maybe, I don't know, like three hours for the whole year if you put it back to yeah. back. And yeah. even that was, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? How the fuck am I going to mm. get 10,000 hours of like, you know, mastery if um, yeah. I can't do it? So then I basically... 
started doing the shows, the one hour shows around Europe. And then I think one month I managed to get about like 1,400 minutes. No, 2,200 minutes of stage time in one month. Fuck me. When you say in hour shows, is that, is that an that's hour? That's like about of, 20, 21 hour shows. Well, that's like an hour of your own material, like a, yeah. almost like a special part thing. Oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so doing it, uh, uh, but, but doing it 20 times in a month. Yeah. Fuck. And you know, yeah, that's the I was just gonna say I got I was so na- you know you're so naive when you start out and uh, I went to a meeting there's a there's a, like an organization a guy who runs an open mic in Dublin um, and he's part of like this some kind of organization that gives comedians uh, like uh, it's called Free Edinburgh Fringe or whatever and you get they kind of give you uh, like a venue and all this stuff for free and advice and they kind of get you they organize your venue and everything for you but you right. have to like commit like this kind of community thing where if another comedian needs someone Black and at, horse or what is it called uh yeah i think it's there's some yeah laughing horse it could be that i can't remember there's, the name there's of them there's like the anyway, there's a free fringe laughing horse and something else That's yeah, I know yeah, you it's one of the, yeah it's one of those and uh i I went to that meeting thinking like, uh, you know, I was going to ask, and I'd only, only been doing stand up like two months, um, or three months maybe. And I was going to ask, could I, I was like, I was like, oh, I, I want, cause he was like, oh, you have to share like an hour with three people. So you both, you all do 20 minutes or you all do 15 right. minutes or whatever. And I was like, oh, no, no, I, I want to, I, I, can I get like a full hour to myself? And the dude just started laughing. He was like, how long have you been doing this? And I was like, three months. And he was just like, yeah, you'd be, he goes, you'd be lucky if you had a good 15, 20 minutes yeah. by the time, by the time uh, it comes around and he's, he's right. Like it's taken me this long to get maybe five minutes that I'm ha- like, I'm, I'm happy with. Um, I mean, seven, that's the thing, it's, it's coming up with material is so difficult. Like for me as well, I've been so stressed, yeah. like, so not stressed, but like I've been so self-conscious about it like, because I've been doing so much crowd work that I don't have time to think of material that I'm editing all the stuff and I'm not coming up with material but material yeah. is the thing that people want but then now that mm. I have so much crowd work I'm, I'm kind of somehow making it work with crowd work on TikTok and on Facebook and people kind of like it I guess so it's also yeah. but yeah trying out new materials because you have to be in a different kind of vibe yeah trying out new materials coming up with new materials is so difficult it's insane mm. Mm. Uh, so like uh, yeah coming up with one hour is, is but you, you can go to the fringe and basically Ori does this He's been to the prison yeah. like three times and he, he has no material. Yeah. He just no, he's goes just there. Like, yeah, yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah well, he, well, he does this Ori thing. I mean, you've seen him basically just like shout out on the yeah, stage yeah. or whatever he does. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's really when you refine it that we get the good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that's it, like you kind of, uh, and that's actually what Chris uh, said to me when, uh, when after. One of the shows, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm glad to see you doing the same five minutes every time you yeah. come back. Cause it's, and it's getting better each time you come back, whereas so maybe some people do it like a different five minutes every single time. And it's like, uh, it's like, yeah, that's another thing. Like, that's, and you probably were the same when you start out. Like, every time, like, the first like 30 gigs I did, I thought you had to have a new five minutes every time no, no, no. you go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I started, I was like, that's what I thought you did, you know. Um, and it was only after like hanging around with stand ups and listening to more experienced comedians that you're like, no, you have to like fucking uh, try and like tighten yeah, a good exactly. five minutes and keep taking yeah. bits out and adding bits in. Um, Once you get the tight five, man, that's because if people want consistency, right? You want, I want to see people mm. killing consistently to give them more spots. Mm. You know, if, it's, if you're going to be like yeah, an yeah. unknown element every time, I'm like, oh, fuck, what the fuck is this man doing, right? Yeah, 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 it's true. Um, and I think uh, Stefan is the other one that has like, uh, you know, he only has like seven minutes of material, but those seven minutes are like, you know, actually five minutes and, and they, they do well every time, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, um, yeah, no, it's crazy. And um, it took me ages, it took me forever as well to like not, I used to always bring up uh, like a notepad on stage mm. for like a month. Or two. I think it was just a nervousness thing or whatever, but uh, right. I'm trying to, uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, like, I, that's what it is. I was, it's, uh, it's funny because like Simon, uh, Pascal, um, a few other guys, and we all kind of started around the same time and it was all within like five months of fucking COVID starting. So it was, uh, it was a kick in the teeth because it was uh, obviously 
I've been doing it five months, but because I was doing it so much, I'd gotten like, I was getting to a place where I was kind of getting, uh, getting like a, maybe I got offered like a showcase type spot, type right, right, like right, a, right. A, like not getting paid, but it's like a step up from an open mic. Yeah, you feel like deal. you're progressing, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it was like a little step up from that in a nicer venue and a kind of... Um, yeah, you do Cosmic better. Saturdays and yeah. you know, those kind of things like, you know, if you have yeah, Cosmic yeah, yeah. Shows. Kind of, yeah, I did a showcase there on uh, Friday. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, yeah, I did, it went okay. But yeah, it was the similar, kind of similar to that. It was the first kind of show up and that was supposed to be in June. So I really felt like I was uh, getting somewhere and then Corona happened. So then... And similar to yourself, because we were in lockdown, I was like, I have to do something to be creative or stuff. So for the first time, I was doing right. making like stupid fucking videos or uh, kind of kind of sketches and stuff, um, just to be creative or whatever. And then I wrote right. a lot. Um, then I wrote a lot, but I don't know about you, but I fucking here I found out more myself now that writing that kind of sitting down and writing until something comes out it doesn't really sometimes it works for me sometimes it doesn't but sometimes the best shit is just like you're shooting the shit with someone or you're watching a movie or you're watching uh, yeah I get I get those I mean to be honest what I try to do now is I basically I uh, did you watch the thing that I posted in the comedians group the, the, the documentary the comedy store documentary? Uh, comedy store documentary no but I've been, I saw the link and I watched the I've been meaning to watch it but um it's some pretty good stuff there. They just, they're just one of the things they say is like, you know, if you want to stay in this business, you have to continue writing new stuff. That's the thing. And then they're talking about yeah. like, uh, you know, a lot of the comedians are just like, like even like uh, Jim Carrey just come on stage and just completely bomb constantly, yeah. constantly, constantly. After he was famous, basically he was already famous, but then he would just completely get destroyed every night because he was trying new yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to do now as well. I'm just trying to write new stuff in the morning. Like the first thing I do when I start the day, I just write new stuff. Uh, and a lot of times mm -hmm. it's like useless things. Like I'm, I, today I wrote some stuff about like the, uh, the abortions in Poland and like the, the court justice, the justice that decided against, I don't know if I'm gonna ever, ever going to use it, but the idea is like, what can be funny about this? And it's like, oh, probably a couple of men. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up going down a rabbit hole of uh, statistics about what is considered domestic abuse in Poland, just Googling stuff. And then, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I, found, I found out some funny statistics about how like um, 13 percent of men don't consider they, they don't recognize in Poland they don't recognize the concept of rape and marriage. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's my yeah. wife. I can put it whatever I want, whenever I want. And yeah, they actually yeah, yeah. said like, yeah. and then even even more insane is like 7 percent of women say that you know women should always should give sex whenever the man wants. Whenever the man you know, wants. Like, yeah. 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 I'm like, all right. This it's is a, it. so. Yeah, you or, find or, I remember. And another funny one yeah. was that um, I think about 14% of the men, they don't consider pushing your wife or shaking her as uh, domestic <laughs> violence, <laughs> which I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. It was like you're um, shaking like a salt shaker until she like, fuck it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, yeah so then I kind of went down that rabbit hole. I was like, okay, I'm probably not going to do this in the context of like Poland, but maybe I can use the, the statistic in relation yeah, to like, yeah, yeah. the European country or the fact that uh, how can I exaggerate that to the next level and the point was like yeah. you know it's not uh, you know it's not it's not a bruise it's not a bruise if it's just yellow with a little bit of green you know yeah 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 and that's the thing it's harder to uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing it's like it's, it's I think it's more of a challenge and it's better it's like it's harder to write make stuff like that funny than it is to be like Oh, I saw I, I, talking about dogs or something. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, I like the I like the challenge of taking something like you know, domestic abuse or something like that and trying to make it, trying to make it funny. You know, um, that's the funny when you talk about the abortion thing. There was a we had an abortion referendum in Ireland. I think like uh, when was it? Two three years ago, and uh, it was um, it got passed, so abortion got legalized. And then some statistics came out that, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, cause we had a big problem where like, if you wanted an abortion in Ireland, you had to fly over to the UK to get one. Like, so, uh, right. um, and then you said, so you're going on a, you know, that, that's how uh, easy jet made it. Yeah. 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 It was just, yeah. That's, a, that's, say, you know, was, that's how Ryan air was founded. You know? yeah, it, yeah. They did deals, you know, uh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
You get like uh, uh, they give you a little, little abortion card on Ryanair. Is this your first yeah. flight for an abortion? Yeah. Six months Yeah, you had to pay. You had to pay for three seats, but um, yeah, they uh, <laughs> and two on the way back. But um, they that got passed, and then the statistics came out that sixty six percent of the population voted in favor of it, and then in the first year of it being legalized, there was six thousand six hundred and sixty six. Abor- abortions like so uh so yeah so it was like six six six, six is that is that true? yeah yeah yeah. Six, six, six. yeah yeah it's true it's true and um i was just for i i like there's a joke there somewhere i don't know how but um i uh yeah it's, it's stuff like that um yeah, that, uh, you know and you, got, you, you, you think somebody yeah. was looking the joke is you think somebody was looking at the statistics and they were like just one more yeah and yeah just the fuck with people you know <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can um, have it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, if you just hang on like two more weeks, you might be able to get like four more ab- abortions so you can make it 6,666. But um, yeah, God. Uh, and it was Christmas yeah, so Day and only like, four more days left in the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it, man. And it's, uh, it's uh, and I'm actually surprised over here that the comedy is way more. I was kind of worried coming here that. Uh, you know, like Berlin is like a real progressive like uh, place and it's very liberal and stuff. And I was really worried that coming over here was going to be like, like the dark humor wouldn't la- like, you know what I mean? And it was so wrong. I was completely like, couldn't be, couldn't be any more wrong, you know? Um, I mean, a lot of times it's just a couple of people that like, you know, like uh, I, I had people, but it's only like one or two people that like, you know, make a, make a fuss about it. Like the, the Victor thing <laughs> that, you know, what they happened at the wall. Um, uh, no, but I've, I've heard him. Yeah, I've and then I had like, I had a guy that came to the show and then the two Jews were performing. And then uh, yeah. he, they were the last act on and then he came to me after the show and he was like, you know, I think this was very offensive against women. I think all the women in the audience were feeling trapped. They were, bro, what are you talking about? They were laughing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the only time I've had something bad here was with the, uh, it was that, probably one of your shows, it was that Space Man News. Maybe, I don't know if it was, but uh, it could have been adorable idiots or creatures on the Sunday world. I did, this, I did the Special Olympics joke and some woman kind of got up and walked out. And um, I'm retarded. And, yeah, 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 and yeah, that's right. I made a joke about like, oh, maybe she, you know, she won a gold medal and she, yeah, wasn't uh, she didn't like me shitting on her. And then I ended up getting a joke out of that because then I was everything. And then another time I did uh, on fire the poetry meets comedy Tyrone. Oh, that, that's show. where you're gonna get a lot of people gonna get triggered because you get the oh, poets. Oh fuck, yeah, dude! I walked in and I just saw like uh, dyed hair, like girls with dyed hair, and I was like, oh fuck, I'm in trouble here. Like, Is it- you don't want to. Say- yeah, yeah, and you don't want the stereotype to be true. You're like, maybe that proved me wrong, but I uh, went up. Um, and then I was doing the joke about, what was the joke about? Some joke about my dick, and then some... Classic. Some, uh, I was like, my dick being... Uh, when the dick, when my dick, because I got... Some veteran? Chances, and my dick, my dick being a veteran. And then, obviously, some tran- transgender, uh, I don't know, I can't remember, it was a man, woman, or whatever, shouted out from the crowd, something like, oh, I lost my dick in the war as well. And, I was like, sorry, what? And then uh, she said something about losing her dick, and I, know, I was like, oh, okay, thanks. And then I did the Special Olympics uh, joke, and then some woman in the front row just turned her seat and faced the wall for like the rest of the like the last two minutes. And it was just so That's funny because so she was just she literally just turned like that and was like right. staring at the wall. And then I was just trying to riff on it. I was like, God, this bitch. I was like, this. I didn't say I didn't want to make it worse, but I was like. And you know it's bad when Tyrone, I did the Special Olympics joke, and Tyrone just, I think he found it funny, but he just put his head in it, and he was sitting at the front so I could hear him. And he yeah, just like, yeah. he just pinched his brain and was like, oh God. And uh, <laughs> that gave me a laugh. And then, but like you said, yeah, like that room, I walked into that room and uh, I, I was like, oh, I'm fucked. Because there was just, there was a very, um, it was just a very, yeah, uh, like, liberal douchey fucking you know by the way people but then, dress you, the but then the thing is because like, the, the thing is you look like a douchey white guy right but i think yeah, when yeah, that yeah. happens you gotta you gotta pull the gay card out right because i think that's gonna save you i do that's how i won them back because i did the it's so true because i did the special olympics thing and they all fucking hated me like the whole yeah. room hated me and then 
I did uh, always speaking to people with disabilities. I'm gay, and then it's just like you play that card, and then you just get a fuck, you get a free pass. So isn't, isn't that isn't that hilarious? So stupid. Yeah, and I won them back. Like, I won them back by the fucking woman in the front row, but like <laughs> everybody else. And then I was like, ah, oh, I won his back. I won his back, and it's just because I played the fucking gay card. It was so stupid. Uh, exactly. Because it oh, uh, it's okay for him to do that. It was like I'm gay, not yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, so is it that like, yeah, is that like... A little bit handicapped, but uh, yeah. he was, uh, and uh, it was so funny because there was a show at, uh, I got asked to do a show at the Tipsy Bear, which is a gay bar, and... Uh, oh, okay, interesting. I've never, I've never been invited to perform there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I found out the whole concept weird because I was asked to do some shows in Ireland that are like, it's just for gay, lesbian, trans people right. or whatever. And then... I was all self-righteous being like, you know, uh, oh, I don't agree with the concept that, you know, comedians should be separated and like, I don't agree with me just getting a spot because I'm gay or whatever. Um, and I refused to do it or whatever. Then they came here and then I think I was, like I said, I got offered it and then I turned it down and I was talking to Dio about it. And then Dio uh, was like, dude, fucking like do it. Like it's just fucking stage time. I'm thinking about it too much. Um, just to fucking do the show and it's like whatever and I was like all right I'll go I'll go hoping that it would like because I knew I'm going to a gay bar that my shit's just not gonna fly like the material is right. not gonna fly and it's gonna be super liberal and then I went in and it's a gay bar but it was all lesbians just all well, I don't know if they're all lesbians it was all women it's just all okay. women and uh I went in and I was like oh fuck and like so they were all really young they were all like those girls who were like there, there, I heard some doing crowd work, and they were all like 18, 19. You went to a bar full of 18 year old lesbians? Yeah, I know, yeah, I should have invited you. <laughs> Bro, that's amazing, yeah. I just, <laughs> just for the story, you know? Uh, yeah, 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 and then uh, I went, and I was like, um, I think I went early. I think I went early. And it was so just shit. That, 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 that's, a, that's a funny yeah. premise in itself. I went there, and it was full of 18 year old yeah. lesbians. <laughs> That, that was it. And then there was no gay dudes, maybe two gay dudes. And then I went in and then you could tell everyone was like, what's he doing here? Cause I don't, I don't look gay. They just thought I was, yeah, yeah, I, always joke that I, yeah. I always joke that I look like someone who hangs outside gay bars and like beats the fucking shit out of people when they come out, yeah. you know, um, excuse the pun, but they, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> and uh, so I went in and I was like, Oh man, I'm fucked. And then I went up and then, I did my thing and I was like, oh, don't worry, you're not being fooled. Like, you're probably thinking, how did this guy get on the show or whatever? No laughs or whatever. And then I made a joke about the, uh, the DJ guy. It was like, it was like a DJ on the stage and he's this big black dude. And then I made a joke about me and him fucking or whatever. And that didn't fly. And I think I went off with like two minutes left. I was like, oh, fuck this. And I went off. And then I was like, oh, I'll stick around, I'll stick around and I'll watch the other uh, comedians. There's two other comedians and there was a drag. Uh, drag king which i'd never seen before which is a girl dressed up as a dude um, oh really okay yeah 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 um and the two were the comedians and i i was like oh i hope this isn't like i stuck around and like i hope they don't prove the stereotype right that like i was worried coming here this one super liberal and super woke or whatever the first girl gets up and i think she's i don't know she's like poly, half polynesian half american or something and she gets up and then She's doing jokes, she's doing jokes, then she just stops with the jokes thing. It's like the fucking, you know, your one Hannah Gadsby. Yeah. You know, right? And she kind of like stopped with the jokes and then was just like, I just want to like say that like white men, straight men should acknowledge their privilege. And I'm not even joking about this and being dead serious. And, I need to, and then everyone was like, woo, clapping. Oh, and, yeah. and I was just sitting in the wings like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then another girl got up and was like, she's like, oh, I've done something really bad. I've like, I'm the ultimate sin and then she's like i'm dating a, a white straight white guy or whatever and then i was like boo and then i was just like oh fuck. i was like fuck this so i just got up and left and, oh it's like um, a fuck it's like a caricature of it's like a meme bro yeah yeah it was it was like exactly what if you would say like it's a woke comedy club it was like exactly that um, just shitting on white so, white men are the devil yeah yeah straight white men the only people that you can uh just shit on completely freely without any repercussions. Like it's such low hanging fruit, but, um, which That's is, uh, I think there's a few of them at the show as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, it's uh, and it's funny because I've had like you do shows over here and then you whatever you say you're gay and stuff. And then you do have dudes come up to you afterwards and they're like, "Oh, you're very funny," and stroking your arms and everything. And I'm just completely repressed, fucking just like, "Oh, thanks," and I fucking jump on a train home and then fucking whatever. Like, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it is weird because uh, yeah, yeah, I think you should, I that perspective. I think you should kind of plow more down, plow on with that perspective, like this kind of experiences where you're like. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a very like straight. What you look, you look like the devil compared, like in their perspective. Mm -hmm. But then you pull yeah, out yeah, the, ha ha, I'm gay card. So like this perspective of like yeah. seeing the the world from this perspective, going into this world with this kind of like. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of plow down. Yeah. That's a unique perspective, and people like that unique perspective, right? Yeah, that's it. And I think that um, and it's so funny because you were one of the same as well, where you were like, I've had people think that I was joking. Like I was yeah. like two Jews as well. I was talking to. There's a uh, fuck. What's his name? There's Adam, and there's the other, yeah. the bigger guy. Adam yeah, the, yeah. And Adam's then, the uh, guy. Adam's the big guy. Yeah, and he was like, we were talking about something, and then he was he asked me some question about fucking women or whatever, and I was like, well, you know, I'm gay, and he was like, I thought you were. He's like, I thought you were just joking. That was like one of your bits or whatever, and then I was like, no, 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 I am. And then uh, he found it fucking hilarious. Um, but you know, it is. It's uh, it's kind of this. I don't know if you know that guy. Um, I'm not a big fan of him, but it's like that guy, um, Milo Yiannopoulos, do you know that guy? Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. So, he's gay, but he's Republican or something? Yeah, he's gay, but he's Republican. He seemed to just like, he got away with saying shit because he was gay, do you know what I mean? Because it was like, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, there's, exactly. a gay, there's a gay dude saying all this anti, you know, you know, gay, you know, saying whatever the fuck he wanted. So, um, yeah, I think there is an element of that where there's probably a presumption that if you are Part but I think I don't know. Community. I don't know if you've ever heard. Uh, have you ever heard like um, uh, there's a there's a there's this quote by Tre not quote but there's this clip of Trevor Noah talking about him and his interaction with Dave Chappelle, and like Dave Chappelle yeah. asking him to like kind of come on tour with him, and then Trevor Noah's like, "Why are you asking me? There's a lot more uh, funnier comedians out there." And then Trevor uh, yeah. Dave Chappelle saying that you know the reason why I'm asking is because yeah, there's a lot of other, I know hundred other funny comedians, but you're interested, right? You have an interesting story yeah, of like yeah. South Africa. So people like to hear interesting stories. Now, at the end of the day, stand-up, especially in long form, it's kind of like storytelling and interesting perspectives are, mm. are what people like. So I think from that yeah. perspective, like, you know, how you having this unique perspective can really kind of uh, differentiate you from all our other comedians, right? Mm. So I don't know. Mm. Yeah, uh, that might be something worth kind of exploring a bit more because for me, like, uh, you know, the whole kind of uh, Eastern European in this world perspective is kind of worked out and comparing different things because okay, people yeah, learn, yeah, yeah. they feel like they're learning something about it, right? And they like yeah. always like that, hearing this uh, unique uh, view, point of view. Yeah, 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 and that's a great thing about here as well. It, comedians talk because there's so many comedians from different parts of the world and them talking about it. and you learn stuff about uh, where they're from. But I remember when I started stand up and I started doing the whole. Uh, I don't do it so much now. Um, I used to have loads of jokes about like how. I, uh, I probably bring it back, but like, I had a lot of jokes about, oh, I don't like being gay, and it's like a fucking nightmare, and it's, it doesn't suit my personality, and all this stuff. And then I had people like afterwards being like, oh, fucking, like I've never, you know, heard someone talking about it that way. You know, it's always like, it's always like, you know, someone comes out and it's like this fucking great celebration party thing, and everyone's yeah, happy, yeah, yeah. and then they were like, I've never heard someone go up and be like, oh, I fucking hate this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I wish yeah, yeah. I fucking. You know what I mean? I, I really, I don't like this or whatever. And people were like, "Ah, oh, it's fucking." I'd never heard someone talk about it that way. But I, uh, yeah, I, you're not the assless uh, chaps kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, um, that that was. Uh, and then actually, it was funny because I didn't for like a month or two. Uh, I never spoke. I never said I was gay on stage. I was like, ah, at some point, I'm gonna have to do it because there's so much shit. There's so much material there that I can't ignore. And then I remember the first time I said it, I was so nervous. And then, uh, and then even afterwards, like just fucking. Now it's just like saying "fuck" or "shit" or any other word in the English yeah. uh, language. But the first, uh, the first couple of times I said it, I was fucking terrified. Like it was, uh, it was weird. But uh, now it's like fucking. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's you know. It's just any other. Uh, any other joke well but, a lot um, of times so the thing is i mean for me i don't know if this is going to be helpful or not but for me like i think a lot of times uh when i go into in front of audiences when i write jokes i think of like what uh I, you know there's the um uh in terms of the metrics that i've set up for myself i have you know the laughs per minute 
uh, and then yeah. stage time, and then the third one uh, was basically jokes remembered. Mm. So this is a bit more of an advanced metric that like, okay, what jokes are people going to remember after the show, right? So for example, sometimes yeah, I talk about yeah. the show, I'm like, okay, so somebody, somebody comes up to me, so like, you know, really funny. Oh, really? Which joke did you like the most? Or which joke do you remember? And then yeah. you find out like, uh, you know, a lot of times the Eastern European stuff was basically the thing that they remembered a lot of times because they connected mm. because they're Eastern European or they like the thing mm. about the Germans only boiling enough water for one cup, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So then that's yeah. come back and people are like, oh, I remember that one. It's like, okay, why? Because I have a German friend or I do that. Or sometimes you got to um, gotta find out what people remember and kind of double down on that because like there's a reason why they remember, right? There's a yeah. reason why they don't remember your Special Olympics jokes or like whatever other jokes you might have that people forget. Yeah, yeah. And then remember the other one. Yeah. And then try to like kind of, uh, for me at least, I try to go a bit more into the direction of the stuff that people remember. Because if they're remembering yeah. it, there's, there's something there. There's a reason why they do it. It connects to them in some way and try to write more like that. Because uh, yeah, yeah, the, the point is, how do you, cause that's how you create a fan base, right? You need to, you, people need, mm. need to remember who the fuck you are in order to be your fan, right? To yeah. come back to your shows. Yeah. Um, so then, well, like, I don't point. know if that helps, but, like, it'd be a good point that if you stick around and talk to people after the shows, it might be worth to kind of, you know, plow down and figure out what's working there. Yeah, you know, that's a great point because I'm a very, uh, yeah, like, that's a good thing, like, stick around and talk to people. I'm very, uh, so I don't drink anymore and then I fucking like anxiety, social kind of anxiety. So after shows, I tend to like, unless I've got. But, but spot, the great, like, the great thing drink. about, uh, I think the great thing about doing a show at sit and hang around after is people, yeah. this is the things, the people that actually liked it, they will come up to you and talk to you, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of thing inbound. Kind of, that's why it's free information. Yeah, I see I'm prone to just do a show and then unless. The only way I'll stick around is like I'll stick and stand in the corner with like like other comedians that I'm friends yeah, with. Yeah, and then, that's classic comedian yeah. behavior because like everybody's introverted. Yeah. But like for me, like I kind of started doing it more because uh, just I mean I, I used to work in sales a lot, so I'm very good at like faking a personality, <laughs> faking the brightness, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of yeah. become like second nature now. But the point is, you also get them to like your Facebook. You get to, you have to you know think of uh, yeah yeah. Like, but uh, again, it's been very helpful for me to remember that people and also. If somebody, you know, and there's so much information out there that if somebody takes out, like, throws away something else and remembers your thing, you're like, okay, why does this stay? Yeah, no, that's a great point. Yeah, I've had that with some this. people. Yeah, with certain jokes. Definitely with that Special Olympic joke. Um, if I, uh, uh, for the listeners at home, <laughs> the premise of the joke, you know yourself, is that the real Olympics should be called the Special Olympics because it's special and the Special Olympics isn't that special because right. whatever. And um, people, comedians love that joke. And then I started doing it and, uh, and then it was killing for a little bit. And then I yeah. got so, and then I got really, something happened where I just stopped enjoying telling it. And then I think if you don't enjoy telling it, the crowd picks up on it goes some away, kind yeah. of energy with it. Yeah, the, so it started, it started away. bombing. Yeah, yeah. It, it started bombing like, uh, for like five shows in a row, it just was bombing, and I'm like, ah, oh, this just isn't working. And uh, mm. I didn't. Um, I probably try and fix it because um, that's what I was saying to someone. Because some comedians were like, oh, I fucking love that joke or whatever. And I always yeah. like love like when it happens and the crowd's reaction or whatever. And then as I felt like that, there's not a big. If you're gonna like a joke about something like that, that's like so. You know, you're basically punching down at the lowest fucking like most vulnerable people in society that the payoff the joke has to be needs so to be, it, needs to be, it needs to be bigger right yeah it just feels like yeah, I mean, needs, yeah yeah i mean the thing with it it feels like for from my perspective is uh i, I much more enjoy the grizzle veteran dick joke uh yeah yeah like yeah, yeah. Poor gun salute because i think it's more uh it's more original and i think you, it happens to you you, yeah. you have like a beaten up dick yeah no pun intended yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, and i think it's more yeah. authentic whereas the Special Special Olympics kind of stuff. It's uh, it's like how do you come up with that? It's because it is it's not doesn't have the authenticity. That's why it comes across a bit mean. And I don't know yeah, if you have a chance yeah, to kind yeah. of um, I think uh, I picked up this little trick from one of the Kevin Hart books, if you believe it or not. Uh, yeah. When one of the pieces of advice that Kevin Hart had like this joke about like him being a midget and like finding another midget, and then this other older comedian yeah. asked him like, did this happen? I was like, no, I just mm. made it up. It's like don't do stuff yeah. that you make up. Do stuff that's real because that'll yeah, that'll yeah. transmit to the audience more sincerely, and they'll do better. Yeah. So I and think that's, that's the kind of the special Olympics thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. 
I think that's the kind of the piece of advice here. Do the stuff that is most real to you and like that is actually comes from a real story because that carries on the yeah. authenticity. Yeah, no, that's 100% because I find that like that Special Olympics jokes, I kind of wedged it in the middle of the five or six minutes and then yeah. it was bookended at each end by real personal stuff. So it was like yeah. authenticity, authenticity and then out of nowhere, this joke that has nothing to do with me Yeah, and it's just whatever and then it was straight back into being gay or my dick or whatever and uh i doubt yeah no it's true because that's what a majority of the stuff is it's like um person it's like they write what you know and then you obviously you know yeah. yourself better than anyone and yeah. i don't want to think about it now the best reaction i've ever gotten to jokes uh were personal stuff like stuff about your personal life or experience so the one that, that i also remember is uh i remember the hospital one Oh, the hospital, and, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of people in Germany will remember. I, I think a lot. That's probably specific to German audiences here, because you know, fuck, I'm I'm yeah. a foreigner. I've never been to a hospital here. What the fuck do I do if yeah. I have a problem, right? So I identify yeah, on yeah. a different level because I'm thinking like, oh shit, yeah. that could be me. How the fuck yeah, am I gonna yeah, have to decide yeah. on based on the the stars that I get on the fucking Google Maps on what hospital I go to? Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing when you're uh, when you do comedy and uh, you're kind of always looking for. Uh, I can't remember who it was recently. Oh no, it's your man, your man Neil Nome, uh, who does Cosmic. He was he talks about it in a set where like you do comedy, and like if something really bad happens to you, at least you're like, oh, yeah, you, you, I can use you this. Get, yeah, you'll get, yeah, 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 you get something out of it. And then I think also as a comedian, like say you're always thinking about fucking humor and how things are funny, and then you go into hospital. Like I was in the hospital for a few days getting that done over here, and just constantly like little things that I don't think people who aren't doing stand-up or constantly thinking about comedy wouldn't pick up on but you're like oh that's so funny how that happened or that's so funny how yeah. you know that doctor's reaction or that was you gotta so write it many, down you gotta write it down otherwise yeah, it go away. there's so many funny things that happened in that space of four days that like it was just uh just little small things and you're always just picking up on small things but um yeah like i've got tons of fucking stories that like i was with uh i was with uh pascal and someone the other day and I was saying I was in, and I kind of threw it off the cuff because it's like it's. Uh, I was in North Korea like two years ago, really on a trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went for uh, I went for uh, like a week, and I said that, and they were like, "How the fuck have you not talked about that?" Yeah, exactly. What the fuck did you go to North Korea? Like that's uh, not something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's like um, and and I'm like, oh, it's, it was such a I will in time, but it was just it was such a big crazy fucking thing and a, a lot of humor can be taken from it but it's like it would almost take five minutes you know what i mean it yeah almost, that's the thing you might need more experience to be able to pull that off yeah exactly and i think i'm saving it for like when yeah. i have maybe a 10 minute set and i can do five minutes yeah. in north korea because yeah i don't think you can just drop that into a set and be like oh, i was in north korea yeah you can't and, just drop it on north korea oh, bah, okay. yeah and then be like oh, i was in north korea and blah 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 and then do like a 30 second joke and then go into something else um but you yeah, know there's definitely something there and i've had like loads of other mad good experiences um that I could definitely joke about, but uh, I think I think we're gonna have to keep them yeah. for for the second second part of the podcast because I think we're, I'm running out of time here for the room. Yeah, no, sweet bro. Yeah. yeah do you wanna nice. Do you wanna ask me anything before we wrap it up, or do you have any any feedback, any any hopes and dreams you wanna put out into the world, into the universe before? Um, uh, you know? Fuck, I don't know. Just uh, oh, I might as well plug my Instagram. <laughs> Rob yeah, does comedy. Rob well, does comedy. Uh, I try to post sets, little clips of sets, and stuff up there um and i actually posted a picture of uh of uh i got an x-ray back of my kidney um, oh, i thought you can see your dick uh, <laughs> that's a good yeah you can see it. yeah i can see yeah, i can see my dick but it's fucking tiny it's like it's like a little toe um the machine was called but i put up i like try to put up some fun and then um, so uh if uh people follow me there and so, uh, so what's yeah, the plan now you hang it just um Rob does comedy on Instagram. Uh, and yeah, I'm here. He's hanging around a lot, or are you going yeah. back to Ireland, or I, I don't know. I'm seeing. I could be going back in like in the next few days because it's like, right. um, it's because like I was talking to some guys and they were like, oh, I was going to stay till mid December and then go home for Christmas and then you know who knows here the lockdown could be extended into December and then I could be hanging yeah. around here for no reason. So probably going to go home in the next few days, week, and then. Um, and then hopefully I'll come back here in January. Um, yeah, man, we'll see what the fuck happens. I mean, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. So like you see, even now, it's time, yeah. to, time to start a podcast, bro. Wrap that yeah, yeah. podcast. All right, thanks, man. You know?
Time to, uh, yeah, time yeah. to do some other stuff. You have to focus on creativity online somehow. If you have, you're talking about doing some skits or whatever, just film them and put them online, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's it, man. Um, because like, if it's anything, different. it's just like this, you get, you practice that muscle. It's the muscle, yeah, that's it, it's muscle. Um, um, and I gave you just a quick one, like I did that uh, Joke Wars thing the other night, right. and it was just writing cheesy one-liners. Um, yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. Like, I never write one-liners, and then I fucking right. loved it. And then it's just there. Yeah, it's like you're just working that muscle. And, uh, and you can just put them on TikTok as well. I think why yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, TikTok's worked out great for me in terms of like getting a bit more following. And uh, it, it's no reason why it can't work great for you as well, right? Yeah, that's the thing. I'm with one-liners. I never write one-liners. Then you see like Mark Norman, he puts like yeah. one-liners. That he, he'll never use in a set, but he, he puts them on Twitter. So like, the other day, I had a joke about there was the ISIS fucking the ISIS beheading and thing and then it was like because they got the charlie hebdo because the teacher was showing pictures of uh muhammad yeah. um and then i was like oh why can't uh why can't isis just go on uh twitter and be offended on there instead of fucking you know kill us and killing innocent people or whatever yeah, yeah. and that got a bit of a laugh so yeah like you said you can do yeah, just, you can do I mean, the, shit the over trick is, i mean uh so, so this uh, this other comedian that does come in other countries sent me a message the other day asking me a question about like uh how do you, uh, what do you do when some people call you hack, right? Uh, yeah. Apparently in his scene, like he does a lot of international stuff, a lot of cultural stuff, and that's considered hack. Uh, bro, yeah. if the audience is laughing, then the comedians in the back of the room can go kill themselves, right? Because uh, that's it, you, need man. To, yeah. you need to make the audience laugh. Don't, don't do jokes just for mm. the comedians or for like these guys that mm. have like, uh, they think they're superior. Audience is yeah. laughing, then everyone else can go fuck themselves. And I've heard a lot of that's comedians it, say man. this. I've heard Bill Burr say this, Louis C.K. saying that when they wrap everything up with an hour, they just go on stage and just do the most hacky, shitty, whatever the fuck gets a laugh, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm yeah. not above a fart joke or a, or, a, or a dick joke or what, whatever gets the laugh, right? And if anyone that's else it, comes yeah. up and says, like, that's, uh, that's, that's not how we do things, kill yourself. Yeah, that's, I got that from, uh, I learned that from Norman, and then I think he got it from Seinfeld, where Seinfeld says yeah. to him. Uh, killing equals cash. That's what he said to him. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. Thing, so yeah. don't worry too much about that uh, what other people think. If you, the only kind of the only currency you want to hear is laughter. If people are laughing, then keep doing it. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it, man. Um, All right. I, well, yeah. Let's, let's All right. wrap it up here, Rob. So good talking man. to you, man. Uh, let me know Thanks when you go back. Me, and you come back. I'll give you some spots whenever. Just sign up, and uh, yeah. hopefully we'll get you back on the next uh, dark comedy night as well. Thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate all, uh, all the spots you've given me so far. And the Jack Omni night was great through the night because the crowd was just fucking on fire. They, they just come, so they just, they're just hungry. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. It was awesome. Perfect, well, man. Right. So enjoy me, enjoy it, your man. Polish uh, life. <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. Catch all right, you later, yeah. it, dude. See you soon. Take care. Hey, guys. How's it going? This is Dragush, uh, straight from the stage. I wanted to thank you a lot for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please do subscribe like and comment and also watch some of my other videos i've got a bunch of videos throughout this whole channel so i hope you guys enjoy thank you and see you in the next one